floor is yours, Bill. All right, there we go. Um, I uh, apologize for this not being a, a full screen share. I tried that earlier in the uh, speaker practice room and the graphics went horribly bad. Um, I've had that issue with this laptop before, so I'll share in this way. And uh, that doesn't mean that you'll see my speaker notes, but uh, hopefully um, otherwise everything is good with this. Let me know if my sound gets choppy. And if so, I will turn off the video. Um, but I am going to talk for a few minutes about the uh, Wikimedia Foundation API platform, otherwise known as how I spent the last few months of my life and will probably be spending um, significant more time going forward. Uh, quickly, who am I? My name is Bill Perkle. I've been at the Wikimedia Foundation for about three and a half years. Um, a senior software engineer for engineer team, and I'm located in Texas near Dallas. And uh, I know uh, time is limited at conferences, and I know it may be getting late in the day for some of you. But so quickly, I'll preview what I'm going to be talking about. Um, the main point is describing the API platform and uh, why you might care about it. Um, secondary point is just to share a bit about what the, uh, the platform team is doing. Uh, this talk will not be a technical deep dive. Um, some of it will be my own personal opinions and perspectives, and I'll be a little bit speculative regarding the future because, you know, we have plans, but sometimes things change. Um, so, the outline of the talk. We first have a quick overview, one slide, of what the API platform is. We'll look at some historical context of how we got there and why we decided to do it in the first place. Um, have a, a quick architectural thought um, with a, a relevant perspective, and then take a closer look at the API platform itself. Um, so, the API platform, um, I'm not going to read all those words. Um, the API platform is essentially uh, the idea is to simplify life for people who uh, both consume and who create APIs related to MediaWiki and MediaWiki data. Um, it involves MediaWiki itself as well as the variety of services that surround it. Um, clearly, this is, is a technical area and involves some technical work. Um, but the focus is really on improving things for actual humans who are trying to get actual things done. Um, a lot of the work is about removing uncertainty and help people focus on what they're really trying to get uh, get accomplished, uh, rather than sort of the uh, the technical details that surround it. Um, I know uh, very many of you are probably fully capable of implementing your own APIs and, and all the things around it, but there are also a lot of decisions you have to make when you do so. Um, and uh, hopefully we can um, help um, establish some conventions around that and, and give you a leg up so you can focus on your actual um, problem. Also mentioned that we're really just starting on this work. Uh, we're far from finished. So a little bit of historical context. Why did we decide to do this in the first place? Um, I'm going to mention uh, four projects uh, that I was involved with that led up to the API platform. Each one of these things was worth doing on its own, but each also uh, illustrated areas where there were uh, improvement possibilities. Um, before I dive into those, though, I do want to mention uh, we're aware that uh, people at WMF and, and the movement uh, have been talking about APIs, API catalogs, API standards, all of those things for a long time. Um, we realize we're not the first people to work on this, and we probably won't be the last. Uh, hopefully, in the time that we're working on it, we can move things forward in a, uh, a productive way. Um, and for any of you who recognize that movie reference, I'm sorry, I couldn't find a, uh, an image of Keanu on Commons actually dressed as Ted Theodore Logan, so this one will have to do. All right, uh, Core REST API. Um, I became involved with that in the, uh, in the fall of 2019. Um, and it is a, a REST API built into MediaWiki Core, hence the name. Um, it overlaps in some ways with the Action API. It offers uh, generally far less functionality, um, at least at this time. It, it does not replace the Action API. We do not intend to replace the Action API, uh, but it was a, uh, an alternative um, that's useful in various circumstances. Uh, the Core REST API is extensible. Extensions can add endpoints to it. 
Um, the uh, initial targets um, included Parsoid in the iOS app. Um, and uh, one thing that we learned um, while implementing the core REST API um, is that we didn't really have comprehensive WMF-wide written standards for REST APIs. We, we wrote some as we went on that and, uh, and documented those um, in their own wiki. Um, but those uh, were really specific uh, to core REST um, and not um, looking so much at the broader picture. Um, next project I'll mention is the API Gateway. Uh, this is based on Envoy. It provides uh, routing um, for uh, for various services that may be placed behind it, as well as routing to things like Core REST API. Um, it includes uh, JWT-based rate limiting. I really wish I could tell you that it provides OAuth 2.0-based rate limiting, and it kind of does, because the JWT on which it rate limits is an OAuth 2 um, JWT. However, if I were to say OAuth 2, then you might expect that it actually um, supports real authentication and authorization. And at this time, it does not. Uh, that's one of the things that we became aware of is that we don't really have uh, WMF-wide standards um, for that or for, or for that matter, for how we handle API versioning or namespacing. The next project I'll mention is the API portal, which is located at api.wikimedia.org. Um, it is a, a MediaWiki instance. It is locked. There's no public editing, which we're aware that's um, unusual. Um, but it's a, a central hub for API-related documentation. Um, it's mostly focused on external developers, external meaning external to WMF, although it's probably useful for anyone. Um, one simplified OAuth2 uh, creation form. Uh, compared to the form on Meta, which supports OAuth 1 and 2, and this is more powerful, but also a little bit more complicated. Um, the, it is not finished. Uh, the API portal is not. It needs uh, internationalization. Uh, it needs a lot more content added. Um, and uh, one thing that we learned in the process of doing it is that our current documentation isn't always easy to find or apply. And we hope to solve that eventually with the API portal as we expand on it. Um, then the last project uh, that I'll mention from a historical context is the Image Suggestions API. Hi, Bill. Am I back? Can yes, you hear me again? You're back. Yes, you're back. All right. Let's share this again. That was this one. All right. Did you hear me begin to talk about image suggestion API before I went away? I hope so. Um, that's where I'll pick up. Tell me if I need to pick up elsewhere. Um, but the idea behind image suggestion API, if, if that part cut out, is simply to make um, adding an image to a page easier for new editors in a, a very approachable way. Um, the uh, image suggestion data itself um, comes from an algorithm created by the research team. So the image suggestions API audio hit or miss Ariel. Tell you what, I'm going to turn off my video. I'm going to turn off my video and see if that helps with the audio. Is that any better now, or am I still cutting out? I will talk a little bit more, and we will see. All right. So uh, we built the image suggestion to API on service template node, which is, is a, a node.js library um, that was constructed by um, other people at the Ed Foundation some time ago. Um, and uh, I'll talk a bit more about that later. One thing we learned in the process of doing the Image Suggestions API is we encountered some inherent um, limitations in the implementation of uh, in the design architecture of Service Template Node. Um, we also found that uh, we did not have as happy a path for service deployment as we wished that we had. 
uh, particularly um, moving from experiment to staging to production. And uh, finally, um, it, it illustrated a, a need for clarity surrounding storage and how uh, services can have that available. And a uh, good news on that part, we have a, a data platform team um, that is working on that issue. I'm not going to talk any more about that part of it. They can do their own presentation sometime if they want to. All right, but what did we learn from all of that? Um, we learned that we can get a lot of good work done with the things that we have, but some things that could be clear are unclear. Um, and some things that could be easier, or at least easier, are harder than they really have to be. Um, and why do we really care about this? Why is this important enough to have a whole effort around? Um, we have a, a, an increasing number of services that are being hosted at the Foundation, and uh, therefore we have an increasing number of APIs um, and, uh, and services and pieces of software communicating with each other via them. And uh, consistency in all of that um, will help people uh, create and consume APIs. And uh, hopefully we can turn um, some things into solve problems and let people get more done. Um, digress for a second from that for a, a quick architectural thought in that um, MediaWiki is clearly a PHP monolith. Uh, by almost any standard, it is a really large piece of software. The uh, piece of artwork that I have in the picture there um, is located in Norway. I won't uh, butcher the pronunciation of the, uh, the actual name, but my understanding is that that piece of artwork is technically a monolith. It's made out of a single piece of uh, material. Um, however, if you take a step back from the monolith, um, you see that there are other things surrounding it. And the monolith itself um, is part of a, a larger picture in much the same way. Um, from a certain perspective, MediaWiki can be considered as simply the largest service in a collection of services um, that are running at WMF. Um, so in this picture I've uh, circled, I don't know how well you can see that, but I've circled a lot of the smaller pieces of artwork that surround the, uh, the central monolith. Um, and there are quite a number of them. Um, but this one shows them a little bit closer. Each of these smaller sculptures um, is an impressive piece of artwork on its own, but each gains its meaning as part of the whole. Um, each one of them matters. It may not be as big as the monolith, but it's there for a purpose. So what does this have to do with MediaWiki? Um, obviously, MediaWiki extensions are great. Um, and are not going anywhere. Um, and there always will be presumably a, a very viable way to add functionality to a MediaWiki installation. However, um, sometimes functionality can be added via services rather than as MediaWiki extensions, um, which has a lot of benefits. You get more of a choice of a programming language. You separate concerns. You can deploy these things independently and it's a little bit more convenient to experiment sometimes without risk of breaking everything. Um, WMF has found services work well for certain things, and you might in your own installation as well. Which brings us back to the API platform. Um, the API platform is less of a, a single code base or piece of technology. It's more a set of, uh, of documentation, uh, best practices, uh, supporting technologies. So there's some code involved, but it's not like one single traditional um, software product. Um, I'll mention the people on the team very quickly. Uh, Sevi is our product manager. Uh, Will and Atieno are our engineering managers. Um, our engineers consist of myself, Nikki, and Wendy, and we also benefit from uh, Hugh's experience as an SRE and uh, Alex as a tech writer, although she is actually a very capable coder uh, when she has time to do it. Um, and what are we working on or what uh, will we soon be working on? Um, I'll go over each of these in a, a quick slide. How am I doing on time? I have nine minutes. Uh, We'll talk a little bit about each one of these points. Um, first, we're looking at enhancements to the API gateway. Um, we're looking at having a staging gateway uh, rather than just the single uh, production one. Um, we're looking at a 
expanding the rate limiting possibilities have different rate limits per service. Previously, there was only a, a, a one bucket for anonymous traffic and another for authenticated traffic. Um, we're considering how to handle authentication. Um, maybe there's a way in which part of that is uh, involved with the API gateway, or maybe that becomes a standalone thing. A uh, security team is also involved there. Um, we are working on API guidelines. We have a, a draft on the API portal right now. Not a whole lot there yet, um, but more will be coming. We are looking at ways um, to assist with uh, hosting and deployment. Um, how to uh, integrate uh, with CI um, for uh, various uh, service implementation aspects, how to uh, do the service hosting on Kubernetes um, and how all that works out and uh, trying to figure out you know, the best paths from experimental staging to production. Um, we're looking at ways in which open API spec automation uh, can be handled. I'm currently looking at um, JS doc function annotation um, and a, a way that we can then use that to generate the uh, open API spec from annotations created from the individual endpoint documentation. So you don't have to write the whole thing in one go. The, uh, the, inf the information for the spec can live closer to the endpoint um, that it's relevant to. Um, and uh, looking at ways that that can be used to uh, create um, linting, testing, documentation and so forth. Um, we're looking at um, API catalogs. Um, the intention is to make discovering uh, APIs easier for people trying to consume them. Um, we recognize that other things exist, such as Hayes Tool Directory or Tool Hub. This is a somewhat different focus. Um, and uh, we are looking at potentially having two catalogs, one internally focused um, probably based on Backstage, which if you're not familiar with that, is a, uh, an open source product originally created by Spotify. Um, and then also maybe mirroring some of that information directly in the API portal. Um, we have also been working on what we call the example node API. Um, this is uh, based on the service template node uh, library that I mentioned earlier. Um, it's essentially just a hello world service. Um, but uh, its purpose is to show an example of an actual deployed service. Um, so it includes everything, uh, for instance, in Helm charts uh, that uh, is necessary for service hosting in Kubernetes. Um, we may port that to service scaffold eventually. What is service scaffolding? Um, well, it would be the successor to service template node. Uh, one of the uh, architectural limitations that we have with uh, service template node is that uh, as a, a library that you build on, it's really designed such that you clone the repository, um, make a copy of it, and add your code. It's upgrading difficult um, when uh, improvements are made to a service template node, and it also uh, means that you carry along unless you manually rip them out yourself. Um, everything within service template node, and maybe in your particular case, you don't care about all of that, and that makes things heavier. Uh, than you wish they were. Uh, so the idea behind service scaffolding is it would achieve the same goals. It would help people get services um, started uh, more easily, uh, but it would be more of a, a plug-in architecture that would use MTM packages to assemble a scaffold and you would just bring in the ones that you care about, uh, sort of pick and choose, mix and match, um, and make upgrades easier. This is still a concept. It doesn't exist yet, but it's a thing that we hope to work on. Um, and then the, uh, the last thing is uh, support. Um, we are hoping to help teams both inside and outside WMF um, that are doing anything related to building APIs. So we're happy to help essentially in any way that we can. Um, we aren't there to actually you know, build the API itself, but we're there to make you look smarter um, while you do it. Um, a few caveats. Um, I think this is my next last slide. Um, we realize there are API types besides REST, but we're happy to help with those two to the extent that we can. Uh, REST seemed like the most productive place to start, um, but uh, who knows what we'll eventually get into and, and where things may go. Who knows, somebody in the audience may come with a, up with the, uh, a great idea for a new type of API tomorrow. Um, so we try to be open-minded about that. Oops. Uh, we uh, realize there are other implementations, uh, technologies besides Node. I know I talked about Node quite a lot, uh, but Node seemed like a good place to start 
um, in play, in part because uh, some historical projects were already using it. Uh, but we've already talked about other things. For instance, there's been some preliminary work done on a, uh, um, a Go template library. Um, and our plans are still somewhat formative and fluid. We do have a roadmap. Uh, and thus far, we focus more on people producing APIs. We'll probably focus a little more um, after the, uh, the new calendar year on people consuming APIs. Uh, but our goal is to help real people do real things. So we will adjust as we need to. So that is the end of everything I had. And uh, if there are any questions, I'm happy to take them. And if not, then everyone can go on with their day. <laughs> Thanks, Bill. Well, there should be there should be questions. I will also mention that if anyone has um, any thoughts about any of this, or if there's anything that you um, are working on that you think we might be able to help with, or you just want to chat about some things, feel free to contact myself or any of us working on this, and we'd be happy to talk to you about it. There's, there's one thing you, you talked about um, moving uh, functionality to services. Do you have some specific things in mind? Are there? I don't, yeah, I don't know if it's so much moving existing things um, that I would have an example of, but the, uh, the suggestion and recommendation tasks um, were things that have recently been um, it worked out well for those to be done as services. In addition to the uh, image suggestions task that I mentioned, uh, there's been work done on link recommendations. There's been at least discussion uh, related to uh, suggestions for section topics. Um, and these are all things that, although they deal with, with MediaWiki and MediaWiki data, it seems like they're suitable um, for um, a service to be involved in the implementation of them. Is that, does that include things that have to do with uh, autocomplete in um, in uh, in forms? Um, I, that's a good question. Don't know exactly on that. I don't see any questions about um, how other. Yeah, I'm. I'm. Uh, I'm feeling that I'm on slippery ice because I'm not really a technical guy, but I'm going to ask it anyway. Um, Semantic Media Wiki also has an API. How? What? How does? How? How do? What would be the impact of? Uh, the changes to the API platform to uh, Semantic Media Wiki API? Well, initially nothing. Um, I know that one of the slides had the, uh, the words API governance on it, uh, but that's really governance with a small g. We're not trying to come in and change the way that anyone is doing anything. Um, our concept of the guidelines is really more like, you know, sort of the Pirates Code, um, if you're familiar with the Pirates of the Caribbean movies. Um, we recognize people are doing things in a lot of different ways and, and that's totally fine. Um, however, um, moving forward, we hope to be able to establish um, guidelines and conventions and standards that people can choose to follow that would uh, make things more consistent across all of the different ways that APIs are used related to MediaWiki, uh, which just means less middle friction for anybody that is working with more than one of these things. Um, and it also means less choices for the, uh, the, the developers are forced to make um, when they're doing a, a certain thing. For instance, if you're implementing a REST API, there are probably a number of ways that you could handle a lot of your details um, related to, uh, say, how you handle pagination or how you handle um, certain conventions regarding your parameters. 
Um, and if we can establish some guidelines surrounding those things, then you don't have to stop and have a, a whole discussion about how you want to do that within your particular API, because hopefully we've made that solve the problem. Thanks, Bill. Yeah, you, you make me think that it's it, it was a good question after all. <laughs> um, <laughs> and I, I thank you for the for the yeah for your splendid presentation. And uh, thanks everybody for being around. If you uh, if you want to. Um, Hope in the Vienna coffee house or the hex hex space, then um, uh, you're welcome. Yes, I, I agree with uh, Thomas. It has been a very interesting, informative day and uh, everything in time. So thank you very much and have a good day. Have a good evening. Have a good night and uh, see you all tomorrow.